So I have to get into this because this I know this is going to be a longer conversation. I have to talk about this. Sure. Simps. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> I have to talk about Simps, man. Do, 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 the yeah. Simpsons. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. So I and and then again, I watched you and you said, mm-hmm. I'm not the type that just blames all women. I'm mm-hmm. blaming the weak men in society. Right. So I want I, I would love you to break down what simps are and their mentalities mm-hmm. and how it's negatively impacting our society. Number one, I do advocate that we beat up simps. <laughs> we, we need to <laughs> actually beat them up. It's crazy out here. But uh, simply put, a simp is a weak male who has to use dishonorable strategies to acquire and to keep a female. A weak male is a man who has to use dishonorable strategies to acquire and retain a female. And what they typically do is they'll imitate the female. For example, I've had a multitude of women ask me, oh, what's your sign? Like, oh, like, do you know your horoscope? And as soon as they say that in my head, I'm like. Yeah, I don't, yeah. It's foolery. <laughs> right. I'm like, you are a dumb, and I'm not going to say the second word. Um, but <laughs> when I hear guys say, oh, what's your sign? Or, oh, I'm a Sagittarius. And it's I'm like. It's worse. It's worse. Right. It's worse. Right. It's worse. It is, right? It's already bad for on the female. But it's crazy because what he's doing is he's picked up on like, oh, this is what they're into. So I'm going to get into this and I'm going to play their game. When really you shouldn't be playing any games. And that's where you get your male feminists from. And they realize that at a certain level, the female, you know, there is a struggle between male and female. Even if you watch National Geographic and you watch animals mating, we often like to talk about lions or gorillas. Um, When you see them mating, does it look like consent or does it look like bro was like you (laughs) And and seized her and, you know, That is what it was, right? And it was a strong male. And then you look at some of the primates, it's like, uh, so I'm going to take about five of these, which means that you, bro, uh, you're not going to get any. And I think that what we have to realize is that not every man deserves a woman. Wow. There's a significant number of males who are unworthy and unqualified to have a woman. I'm not saying that because they're broke, which is a factor, but and we also need to define what is broke because people don't know, Mm -hmm. but... It's because they're too emotional. I heard someone say, you know, the alpha males are the guys who commit, you know, violence against women. I'm like, no. They're protecting. I'm so strong and so masculine that when I look at you, like when you make a mad face, it's funny to me. Mm -hmm. Like if you ball up your fist, it's cute to me because it's like, oh, this is not even hard. It's like all squishy. (laughs) Like you cannot make me feel threatened because I look at you as such a small, delicate, like non-powerful entity. Mm Mm-hmm. That's how strong and masculine I perceive myself to be. So, like, I would never even consider DVing you, right? Like, it's ridiculous. The weak guys, on the other hand, they might be closer in size to you. They might feel threatened. They're very emotional, like you. So the woman's emotional. Yeah, she might wild out and throw a punch at you, right? They're emotional just like you. He might wild out and throw a punch at you. Mm. These are the simps. And that's what people don't realize. Like, the, the alpha male, the man who can take his pick of the females if he chooses to, I don't even really need to get that mad at you because you're always aware of like, if he just goes out in this world, women will attract to him. Yeah. So he is not obsessively just like, no, you have to do this. He's more so like, I recommend you do this, but you know, it's a free world. I don't have to control you. If you don't want to get on program, there's about 10 or 20 that will. Yeah. And you're aware of that and I'm aware of that. So there's a lot of problems that are never a problem because you're constantly trying to earn and re-earn me. Yeah. So you're going to behave better. With the simps, shorty talking reckless, and, and and he can't handle it because he lacks emotional control, he lacks knowledge, and he knows that he's resource deficient. Various capitals, not only the capital of maybe attractiveness, height, strength, finances, uh, emotion, intelligence, whatever it is, he knows he's capital deficient. Mm. So he's going to be like Pepe Le Pew trying to be very controlling and hug you too tight and love on you too hard. Uh, but also, he's in fear. And so these are the the things that simps do that make them extremely dangerous and unappealing. But the problem is that if a woman grew up and her father was a simp or a woman has experienced a number of simps before you, what do simps do? Like, oh, here's flowers, here's gifts, here's what they, they try to pay for the love. Whereas a woman, I might meet a woman and she expects certain things that she's not going to get. And the reason she doesn't get it is because it's like, 
I don't have to buy you anything. Yeah, like, I'm prize. <laughs> <laughs> in a real way. Like, yeah. it's like it wouldn't even cross my mind to buy you anything. Primarily because you haven't made me any money. When I buy you Ooh. something, it'll be because I'm returning value that you've given me. I'm returning value you, to you that you've already delivered on. But until then, you're with me because you've looked at me and realized that, ooh, like if I stick with this guy, he's going to take care of me. He's a very loyal, honorable man. He's not going to leave me abandoned. He's not going to have me and his kids living in poverty no matter what. The government doesn't have to tell him to take care of his kids, right? Mm -hmm. Like he has morality. So I'm giving you a chance. You know, like, I'm not trying to spit game at you. I'm giving you a chance to spit game at me. Yeah. It's a flipped situation. And just simply put, I want everyone to understand how relationship dynamics are supposed to start. At the beginning, I will pursue you because you're a woman. I could be a total, you know, I could be a dangerous person. I'm bigger than you. So at the beginning, I pursue you. You give me a chance. Right. We go on a couple of dates and you realize who I am. You get a sense of my character. Your family signs off of me. Now, for the rest of our lives, you pursue me. Mm hmm. And that's how the actual dynamic really works. Mm. The problem is when you got those simps, they create so much havoc in the female expectations. And then we have problems in the society. So I think simps really need to be marginalized. But I also think women need to know that not every man is qualified. And also they need to be conscious of the fact that just like Chris Brown, like, you know, he has women paying for photos, right? Yeah, a lot of money, too. Yeah, shout out. Just shout to out give to, a hug and squeeze the little butt cheek, too. <laughs> shout out to Chris Breezy. Man. Which is to say that he's clearly a man who is attracting multiple women, and they don't care if there were 10 women before them that did the same thing. Yeah. They still want to do it, which lets us know the truth of human psychology, especially female psychology. They're very social animals. They move where the group moves, and they can recognize value, right? They recognize Chris is the guy, so we're all going to go toward Chris, Yeah, which means that in reality, we need to acknowledge that when 10 women go to Chris, that means there's a couple guys that are left without women because he's overconsumed. Mm. So let's not play games and have kids by those guys that are not worthwhile. Let's not play games and go on dates with those guys that are not worthwhile. Let's not play games and accept money from those guys that are not worthwhile because that's what happens a lot of times right is yeah. your, your sugar daddy and he can pay to play and then you think you're going to like at some point stop that and then go get in a, a real situation when really a boss doesn't want to deal with you after you've been paying to play yeah no i totally and then you're going to come in with uh unrealistic expectations too with that relationship as well yeah that's true and yeah. if reputation. you had a sugar daddy i mean and then you're it's trying crazy. to get with the Alpha male, yes. There's gonna be it, right. I have so many. My brain goes all over the place. So um, one thing that you brought up was um, when you look at you know animals and stuff. And there was a study done on like orangutans, mm -hmm. where the ones that were weaker, because the ones that were bigger, they didn't even have to go up in the trees, and the women uh -huh. just flock and mate to them. But the ones That's that awesome. were smaller and just knew that the women didn't want them, they would go up into the trees with the women and do like a sneaky rape. Mm. So just to, just to yeah, add what you're right. saying, I, that was fascinating right. to me. I was like, oh, it's a sneaky rape. Yeah. So let's just be honest with you. Like being a male feminist and stuff is just for, uh, you know, just uh, my mind's going all over the place. On Google, they hide all this information because mm -hmm. I found a study where they were talking about this, that male feminists don't really exist. They they just want sexual opportunity. Mm -hmm. And I spoke on it. But if you go to Google, like it's so hard to find. That's right. They hide all these pages and they just push male feminism and they push men to be feminists and be like a woman. And it's it's crazy. So I just wanted to speak on that. And then. And thank you for already touching on that, because you already kind of answered my question about male feminists that they are they are the simps and then my question now is what are your views on women working in the male dominated jobs like the Kamala Harris running for right. president that's this is a big wild. one you know yeah that's why <laughs> or the secret service they were protect they're a bunch of women uh, protecting mm -hmm. the president that's and wild. i was like why are we pushing this like narrative so what is your thoughts on all this it is the expression of a sick society a truly sick society and it's also women buy into this it's strange and comical maybe about a year ago actually a year and a half ago now i was running a podcast and because women are quite irresponsible especially in the west when we book women for the podcast we have to book say like 30 women to get 12 or you have to book 12 women to get four because they're flaky and irresponsible okay. that's really who they are conversely if it was males and we booked 10 we're probably gonna get eight well why 
because life is not on easy mode for males. They don't get freebies. You, as a man, you can't walk down the street if you're broke and hungry. You know, you meet a woman like, hey, like, do you want to take me out to dinner? I'm hungry. That's not going to happen. But a woman can easily, if she's broke and hungry, go on Tinder and get a free meal, three meals a day, right? Oh, yes. So women are used to not having to keep their word, not having to be responsible. And so anyways, I say this to say we're running a podcast, and I think we had wanted for this one, we had wanted seven girls. And so we got 22 to confirm and like 15 showed up. So it was just unusual that such a high number actually showed up. So we're like, all right, let's run it. Let's run it. We got mics, pull out the extra mics, you know, grab that couch, put that over there. So like, we're going to run it. So we had a ton of girls. And then what happened during the podcast is that the girls got jealous of each other. And a fight wow. broke out, a literal fight, not an argument, but an actual fight. And I'll tell you why we do something called the drip cam. Right. And so girls sh stand up, show her outfit. And a lot of the girls are actual models. Right. Not like an IG model, but real models. Right. So we do a drip cam. They stand up, show their outfit. And remember, I, I produce clothing. Right. So I'm also putting the girls in my clothing so we can showcase it. So we do a drip cam. Good marketing. <laughs> and we'll, we'll rate the girls outfits. We'll rate their drip and the girls will rate each other. Well, started going left because there's too many girls. When there's a lot of girls and just a couple guys, things get very competitive among the females. And so they rate each other, and then so-and-so says this, so-and-so says that. Now they're arguing. Next thing you know, they're, they're throwing alcohol and chips and sauce at each other and then trying to fight each other. Now, before this started, we were having a conversation, and we had talked about males and females physical strength and job roles and i said you should never have a female as a police officer you should never have a female as a security guard a bodyguard any protective function not only because they're physically inferior emotions. but their emotions and their cognizance their situational awareness they don't even perceive threat because they don't have to if you're walking down the street and you bump into a guy do you expect that you might have to you know throw throw some hands mm -hmm. no he's gonna say sorry i apologize if i walk down the street and bump into a guy that can escalate in the wrong way quickly too mm -hmm. to a life or death situation so we have a different level of awareness so anyways the girl's like no i would take a female bodyguard a female security a female police they can do the job just as well now fight breaks out these girls all can, uh, you know, come down on each other. I get three of them. I'm literally holding three of them wow. and two arms, and they can't get over there. And the homie's holding two of them, which is to say that two men are stronger than five women. Yeah. Easily. Yeah. And it's on footage in case people are like, no, you didn't do that. Like, yeah, I'm holding three women, and he's holding two, and they can't even move. So the fact is that it's not possible. It's just the sign of a sick society letting people do things they're unqualified to do. Now, in the case of Secret Service, it's dangerous. Uh, if I was president, I'd be like, absolutely not. Um, and in the case of Kamala Harris, in her, she's uniquely bad because <laughs> she's not even a an intelligent one. There are women that are significantly more intelligent than Kamala Harris. Shout out to Barbara Jordan, uh, a black politician who was very well spoken and articulate people don't give her enough credit even you got Maggie Thatcher they were much better at pretending to be a man mm -hmm. which is what Kamala is doing she's pretending to be a man they were better at it they were still not as good as a man there's a couple reasons for that number one the natural faculties of male versus female are suited for leadership even if you look at entrepreneurship there are far more males running companies why we have higher risk tolerance in addition to that you look at the bell curve of IQ what people should acknowledge women on is on average women are more competent and more intelligent on average but if you look at the extremes who's extremely not intelligent well those happen to be men you know higher rates of autism things like this but if you look at who's extremely intelligent meaning genius iqs those are overwhelmingly male mm -hmm. so we dominate there which is to say if you're going to have a leader of other people those should be the persons who are most intelligent which are always males yes so that's what we have to deal in reality. Kamala Harris is actually a scary character in as much as she exhibits some of the worst female inclinations. She'll say something and then cackle laughing yeah. afterward, which is a chiefly female thing. And we can't get mad at that. I, I like a woman who's lighthearted, but I don't like a leader who appears to be a goofy broad. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's different. Like when you're like, we're out and I'm a guy and we tell bad jokes that ain't even funny. Nice young lady. Ha, 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 ha. Right. laugh at your bad joke. <laughs> yeah. Right. But when it's the president of the United States and it's she's laughing good. at Russia, you know, it's like, that's not yeah. even funny, shorty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. A hundred percent. And then just I have so many thoughts on that, too, because she'll just say whatever the public wants to hear. And that's even scarier. I want I'd rather you just, 
you're 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 standing on morals and principles and truth then and, and it sounds bad right. coming out then you just saying whatever people want to hear and still sounds bad that way though too though so um i wanted to tell you something real quick too i'm just i'm just i was thinking about so much but i had come to this i want to just tell you this story real fast um I had come to this realization that men and women were different and it was a funny way I did, right? Because I was raised by a single mother and okay. I was raised around feminist mm-hmm. and I was raised to have a very different mind frame. So you can only imagine mm-hmm. the, uh, we, we talk about it was guy that definitely helped me okay. for sure. Cause the being a, yeah, the Lord is good <laughs> cause I would have gone down a scary path. Um, but I was, I, so, you know, dogs, they, most of the time, once they've gone through trauma, they just come up to you and want to be petted. So I always kind of think of like men again, like, well, not all unless they're trained to obviously attack. But I was watching this dog and the, the dog doesn't even know me and is so super comfortable with me. But I had gotten some bunnies and the bunnies automatically are scared, like <laughs> okay. super scary. And yeah. then they made me so mad because they'll thump really hard mm-hmm. as if that's supposed to scare me. Same thing as you said, your little soft hand, right. right? So I was like, okay, whatever. And then I looked up on line, why are they like this? And it's because they know they're weaker. Mm. They know that they, without even understanding, you know, English, mm. they know that they are the prey. Right. And so they're scary. They're very scared. And so what they have to do is try to act tough and yeah. be very snappy and bossy and rude to try to, try to, seem so and then you have to gain their trust so you have to actively show and pursue that hey i'm not going to hurt you over time and then once they're committed they're committed Mm. just to go based off of what you said that as a man i pursue you and then after that you're always pursuing me and i just thought about that dynamic with my bunnies of like this reminds me of women Mm. like bunnies just like we with we pretend we're so tough but like the reason why i feel like we're getting so aggressive and we're trying to prove men like we're trying to go into male dominated roles and try to prove a point consistently. Remind me of my bunnies. They were trying mm-hmm. to always prove a point of like, no, just accept that you need me. You know right. what I mean? Right. <laughs> so I just wanted to share that with you. So just to um, end, the, end it a little bit with this last question. So what makes a man masculine and deserving of respect and what makes a woman feminine and deserving of a man? The most important thing, and this goes back to Mr. Rogers, this is why he is an American icon who is not respected enough. And you know, we throw people like Mr. Rogers in the garbage. And in fact, we even throw religion itself in the garbage. Doesn't even matter which religion it is. As long as it's not like a fake modified version, we're going to throw it in the garbage. And Mr. Rogers is a fascinating uh, character in as much as he was a, a minister and he was able to bring goodness to people without necessarily, you know, all, like Jesus said in the Bible. But he pointed out something that was critical for young people, which is to say that if you are born a boy or you're born a girl, you're naturally going to mature into a man or a woman. And the way you are is perfect. You're growing up just right. What we experience in our society today is that, you know, the reason that the maturation of a boy to a man or a girl to a woman uh, doesn't occur naturally is because it's being interrupted, which is to say, like, if you plant an apple tree seed, the seed is going to turn to an apple tree. It'll right. never turn to an orange tree or anything else. It's wired in there. So the problem is today we have a lot of interruptions to that, which is natural. We mm. have interruptions to the natural maleness and masculinity. You're a boy. You're going to have testosterone pumping. You're going to have natural inclinations toward women, toward aggression. Uh, You're going to have better spatial awareness. You're going to have better math skills early on. This is all hardwired within you. It's the interruption. A lot of human beings, what we are is what we imitate, what we're conditioned around, what we're trained on. And if you look at the schools, and I've observed this firsthand, I did a program called Teach for America because I thought it was going to help, you know, poor black and Latino kids get education. What I realized, it was actually an organization filled with liberal white women, which is to say the devil. And <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> they were going specifically into urban schools, black and Latino schools, and they were teaching LGBTQ plus ideology. Now, what's the plus? We'll find out soon. It's quite dangerous. Uh, but they were teaching that ideology and that leftist uh, negative stuff. And they were trying to destroy and deride the values and cultures that were in those communities. So they were interrupting the natural progression. I say that to say, if you grow up as a boy or a girl, you're naturally going to progress into a man or a woman, and you're going to be feminine and masculine unless there are interruptions, unnatural things. There have been many 
historical wrongs or things that have caused certain traumas within given communities. And increasingly, we're seeing it in the white community now, Mm -hmm. higher levels of illegitimacy. It used to be that white families, you didn't have illegitimacy. They blamed the blacks. Look at the blacks. They can't keep their families (laughs) together. Now they're in the same situation increasingly. But I say that to say, if you have a a normal heterosexual mother and father, there's no violence there. There's mutual respect. You're going to grow up just the right way. Um, But now we have so many interruptions. So just want to put that out there. So that was good. What are the things that make a man masculine, honorable, worthy of respect? Uh, Number one, he's mastered the self. This is critical for the man because unless you've become a boss of yourself, I have something called boss university, but it's mostly regarding the inside. Everyone wants to be a boss. They want to run other people. That's our arrogance, our narcissism. You want to tell other people what to do. You can't even tell yourself what to do. You can't get yourself to wake up on time. You can't get yourself to be disciplined and focused. You're not a boss. You're a peon, but you don't know it because you're lying to yourself. And you have these delusions of grandeur. So we males have to first have self-mastery. Why? You're bigger than a woman. You're in your home and it's private and no one else is there and you get angry. You could do the most horrible things. Mm. You have to have the control not to do the most horrible things because there's no one there to stop you. That's why I always, you know, I, I joke with my old lady. And I was like, I was like, this house is so big. Mm-hmm. Nobody can hear you. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, you better be, hey, nobody can hear you. Mm-hmm. I tease her, but it's also not funny because there are guys who don't have control of themselves. And a woman in a home with a man is in a dangerous place when he does not have self-control and self-discipline. So number one, self-mastery mm-hmm. as a male. Number two, you have to be willing to sacrifice Yes, you have to be willing to earn and happy to earn. I'm not saying you have to earn well, but you have to be willing and happy to earn. Those are three things that are very basic and critical. I'll give you an example, which is different than the female. Like say I'm working late, which is almost every day, Mm -hmm. uh, seven days a week. And so women are lovely creatures. They want to stay awake. Like, oh, let me stay awake. I'll bring you water. I'll make you some food. I know you're going to be up late. And, you know, just try to make it easier for you to do the work that you must do to maintain lifestyle and also to move forward. Mm -hmm. I tell her, no, please go to sleep. One, because females actually require more sleep than males. That's a scientific fact. Uh, Number two, I want breakfast. (laughs) So like, I don't want you to try to stay up as late as I stay up because I'm waking up in three hours regardless because I got a meeting in the morning. So Mm -hmm. I'm going to knock out. I'm going to wake up in three hours. I'm going to take my meeting, but I want breakfast before my meeting. So I want you well rested so you can wake up and make my breakfast so you can do your side of our business. Our family is business. Do your side, your job. Yeah. Yeah. Your job and I'm your boss. Mm -hmm. But first I became the boss myself. So those are items for a man. Self-mastery, uh, emotional intelligence, discipline, ability to earn and being happy to earn, and willingness to sacrifice. Sacrifice for who? Your children, your wife. Sacrifice your sleep, your time, your emotion, and your life if it comes to it. On the other side, a woman is to not have ego and arrogance, to be a great leader, to lead with love, to be deeply loyal and dedicated, knowing that your man is your law. The government is not your law. Your man is your law. And stick by him and even prioritize him over your children. Why? You chose him. You didn't even choose your children. They came out how they came out. Your man is number one. If you always take care of your man, your family will be provided for. If you were to lose your man versus say you got five kids, you lose one of your kids, you lose your man, the whole family might fall apart. Everyone's done for. You lose one kid, it is what it is. I'm not recommending anyone lose a kid, but that's the level of priority that you have to have towards your man to be chased. That's good not only for him, but that's also good for you. Females today, they go around, have intercourse with so many people. They're poking their penis into your heart. You finally find the guy you like, and your heart is has all these holes in it, and it's so incomplete. You have nothing good to offer to him. And also, be mentally well. So many women are mentally deranged. It's because they're existing in unnatural life ways. They have a job of a man. I find it disgusting when I'm dealing with a woman and she wants to tell me about her job. Like, oh, my boss said this or my coworkers or and all this gossip and stress. And I'm like, that's funny because you have one job and you want to complain about it. I'm running four corporations and I don't have anything to say. When I'm done working, I don't have anything to say about my work. I don't even need to vent to you. I don't even need to complain. That's another thing for a man. I want to highlight. I said emotional intelligence. I could hold it in. Mm. See, we always tell like, oh, express yourself. Maybe women. Yeah, great. Fantastic. As a man, nah, bro, hold that in. Yeah, I go hold. I have things I've done I've never told anybody, and I never will. I have challenges that I experience I never complain about. It's not necessary. Mm. I can hold it in, burn it up, and throw it away and keep going, unfazed. I don't expect my woman to be able to do that, but I expect myself to do that. Even my grandmother, when I was a young man, she told me, she was like, if you're crying, when does your wife get a chance to cry? 
When you start yeah. crying, that's when we know everything is all lost. Everyone will fall apart around you. You can never be the leader if you fall down. So that's a man. He always has to stand tall. The woman can be soft, but you have to be great at mate selection, be good at deferring, good at listening, um, and not have ego. And I think if, if she can handle those things, we'll be in a good position. That's amazing. No, I actually learned as a wife, uh, because before being raised by a single mother, you're taught all the opposite things to be a man, to not need a man, to not depend on a man. And I got burnt out so fast mm. at the ripe age of 20. I was like, that's mm. early. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how they keep going. Right. How do you keep going into the 40s? My, you know, mm. family members that are in their 50s that are still mm. doing that women. And I'm like, how are you not tired? How have right. you not came to the reality of like, I clearly need a man. I don't want to do this. I want to be at home with my children, just raise my kids. Like, mm -hmm. and what you said, I would rather listen to my husband than a boss who could fire me any day. Right. And I'm so compliant and I'm so, um, I'm obeying the orders that this man that's a stranger mm -hmm. is telling me, but I can't listen to my husband who has, who loves me, who has good intentions for me, who will not leave me or mm -hmm. fire me the moment things get tough. You know what I'm saying? So, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love this conversation. So if you guys enjoyed today's session, you guys can click here to watch another episode. If you guys want to experience one-on-one -on -one coaching with me where I really help people who do struggle with BPD, do struggle with femininity, and do have relationship issues, you guys can click the link in my bio on my YouTube or on my Instagram bio to my pillar link and you guys will find one-on-one -on -one sessions. I also have eBooks such as How to Magnify the King and Your Husband and I'm the Prize Said Who, which are both self-reflection eBooks that have really saved and helped marriages.